Hey everyone, we've been in Tokyo about a week now and it already feels like forever. A lot of our trip so far has been walking around and looking at buildings and neighborhoods, which, like with the Temple Garden in Narita, is probably more enjoyable to do than to watch. But throughout these past several days, we've done and seen some stuff, so I'm going to present a collection of various things here in a loose anthology format. We did not do all of these things on the same day, and we have not filled every day to the gills with things. One of the days I just didn't bring my camera at all because I didn't feel like recording things that day. Okay, let's get started. I know, it's a travel cliche that's a little played out by now. You're starting a vacation and you've just arrived in a new city, so what's the first thing you do? You take a 45 minute train ride followed by a 25 minute walk along the riverside to pull other people's garbage out of the smelly muck next to the river. Yeah. So before we'd even made it to my friend's place, we stashed our bags in these very convenient lockers at the train station and went to a place called Moss Burger, which is Japan's kind of first burger chain. Uh, some people like it, some people don't, but we actually thought it was pretty good. From there, we met up with a group of people and hiked out to the garbage picking spot. We picked up some trash and made a little crab friend. Eventually, it was time to meet my friend so that we could uh, go to our accommodations. And uh, on the way home, we encountered a motorcycle gang of some kind. <laughs> Speaking of accommodations, check out this snazzy place we've been living. You put your key in here, and this door opens like an evil villain's lair. Just listen to that sound. Then you enter here. These hang from the ceiling in the hallway. He's got a big kitchen for Tokyo, and sleeps in the loft above. There's a whole shower room, which is sweet. And then there's our room, which was much more snazzy before we went off like a bomb in it. Our first night in Tokyo, we went to Shibuya for ramen. We rode a lot of trains this week, but I didn't film in any of them. It just seems weird to be filming people stuck with you while they're trying to live their life. So just know that riding trains has been a huge part of our experience that is not reflected here. Shibuya is one of Tokyo's entertainment districts, so even though I filmed this at night, it looks quite bright. This place just has tons of restaurants and bars and other kinds of stores. We got some ramen! Shibuya is also the location of the famous Shibuya Scramble Crossing, which just means it's a crosswalk where the pedestrians in all directions get to go at the same time, so you cross through the center of the intersection. There's actually many minor scramble crossings in Tokyo, but for some reason this one is famous. There's tons of videos of people using the scramble crossing, but I filmed one anyway. There are many clips like it, but this one is mine. Great stuff! We have been doing a lot of walking. On this particular day, the place we walked is the famous Tsukiji Fish Market. It's a big outdoor market that has a focus on fish but also sells other stuff. I tilted my camera down in this one so that I wasn't blasting people in the face with a camera, but it means that I did capture less of the market than maybe I, it would be useful. One of the first things that we bought were these expensive strawberries. Well, expensive for Canada, the prices can be pretty high in Japan, but basically every strawberry is the best strawberry in the batch back home. Another thing Steph wanted to try is what's called tamagoyaki, or literally fried egg. Unfortunately, it's glazed in a sweet sauce rather than a savory sauce, so it actually was not her favorite. I ate most of this one. There was also this thing called egg milkshake, which we bought mostly because it had a cute penguin on the bottle, but it kind of tasted like melted ice cream. This thing was delightful. From there we got some onigiri or hand pressed rice balls with things in them. Uh, mine had uh, mackerel in it, which is a fish, and Steph's had cod roe, which is the fish eggs that you get on um, sushi, except they are huge. 
We've had like a billion of these things by now at all the convenience stores, but the hand-pressed ones are pretty good. All right, let's see what else. Uh, oh, we bought some seafood soup from this guy. It was kind of a spicy uh, soup and uh, it was pretty tasty. There was a whole bunch of stuff here, but since you probably don't want to sit through an hour of us just walking around, I condensed it. Japan has an emperor, and he has a big palace in the center of Tokyo in the high-end Ginza shopping district. There have been times where it's considered the most valuable real estate in the whole world, so we wanted to pay it a visit. But along the way, we found the statue of Chirori, who was found with her five puppies in a garbage dump and was going to be put down, but instead became Japan's first therapy dog and had a successful career. We probably didn't tear up in the park. That would be weird. There was also a big kabuki theater here, which we did not go in. This is one of those minor scramble crossings I was talking about before. There's nothing famous about this one. It's just a crosswalk. Um, but honestly, I kind of like the scrambles. One of the things I find interesting here is how stacked up everything is. This is like six different restaurants, each one having its own floor, and then there's another one under the bridge there. Uh, back home, almost all the restaurants are on the ground floor, whereas here, they're often above ground. Anyway, we made it to the palace there. That's the wall that you can see, and uh, moat. This is how we breach the fortress. We wait for the crosswalk and then we go. This place is big, but it's also a palace where the emperor lives, so a lot of it is off limits. We were a little tired, so we found a place to sit down and have a little snack. We actually saw relatively little of the palace, but the parts that we did see were quite nice. This is a uh, very well-maintained gravel. That bridge in the distance there is in the restricted area, and this bridge here goes up to the front door where someone is obviously standing guard. We did get to see one little bit of action while we were here. You see, this park, like a lot of parks in Japan, have a strict no running, that means no jogging, uh, policy, and uh, well... What is that? This lady in the running clothes, she was running. There's apparently a garden here that's quite nice that is open on some days but not others. This was a not day, so I don't know, but I'm still glad we went. It was nice. Tokyo Station is perhaps unsurprisingly one of Tokyo's major train stations. It's very big and pretty on the inside, uh, at least at the opening, but honestly, a little bit screw this place. We came here specifically because we were trying to find one of the shops that in the uh, attached shopping areas, and there were so many maps, and they connected to different parts, and then the different parts didn't have each other on the map. It was a mess. We ended up basically reverse engineering the position of this one based on like some signs we saw in the background of a picture on Instagram. That's how we found this one. In an attached but apparently unrelated shopping center, there was a bunch of other stores we wanted to visit that were, uh, each store was basically dedicated to a particular character or like the merch from a particular program. And uh, we were looking for a particular one and again, it was just a zoo here and uh, none of them were labeled as far as we could tell. But we did eventually find the Studio Ghibli store and they had some pretty nice stuff. A lot of these stores had these mystery boxes where you would buy it and you're not sure what thing you're buying and they wanted you to collect them all anyway. That did not appeal to us. We were in that maze for nearly an hour and a half. But while we're talking about shopping, we may as well talk about some of the other stores. Tokyo Hands is a big multi-level department store. They sell a lot of different things here. Uh, we originally went in for stationary supplies, but there was actually a lot of stuff. House pig. The lights weren't actually flickering here. That's a camera thing. Oh, those are super cool. Little mushrooms. You put them on the Oh my fucking god. That's. I mean, you can make though. I never even thought about that. But like. This next one is the first of many sewing stores we'll go to throughout this trip. 
Steph was quite happy with this one. Randomly, there was also this cool wood flat pack kit thing. In terms of knitting stores, there was this one called Walnut that Steph was quite excited to go through, but I did not film in, and another I didn't film in called Amimono Spin. So just know she's doing okay there. And then a wonderful wool roving spinning shop, which uh, I also didn't film in because it's difficult to film in a small shop and not feel like a jackass. This place is super cool. It's called Pigment, and it just has differently colored dyes. That whole wall there that you can see is just differently colored dyes, uh, and you can just pick them out and buy them, and it's super cool. Maybe I'm just being a snob here, but the food in Japan has been pretty great. I mean, this thing is basically just hot dog on a stick with a, like a croissant pastry around it, but the pastry is really nice, and the hot dog is pretty good. Um, it just feels like a nicer quality version of the stuff that one could get at home, just like, you know, done better. I think a big factor in that is just that things aren't as sweet here, and so they actually kind of taste a little bit more like how I want them to. Like, this cinnamon roll is bready and sweet and cinnamony with a bit of icing, you know? And this cake, instead of being a foamed sugar, is actually, you know, tasty. Even we can't eat Japanese food every day for a week, and so we went for pizza. And this place is clearly trying to be like a greasy slice, but it ended up being pretty good pizza. One of the days we had yakitori, which is just grilled chicken on a stick and with salt, and it was really tasty. This is a breaded pork cutlet and egg over rice, also delightful. This is some convenience store fried chicken. Translates to something like coming of age cheese. We just call it adult cheese chicken. <laughs> One of the places we knew we had to go was Kura, a conveyor belt sushi place. You order on the tablet, nothing particularly weird there. But the interesting part is the conveyor belt. These ones along the bottom, anyone can just pick up and uh, you'll be charged for at the end. Um, whereas your orders that you made on the tablet come up along the top there. Uh, it's actually a lot of fun just eating and then you know, you're basically not even paying attention to the belt, and then all of a sudden, while you're there, one of your orders will just kind of slide along, and all of a sudden, uh, it's like, oh, what is this? Oh, it's that thing that I ordered a while ago. Um, and it's fun to just kind of, like, pull the plates off the thing and go back to eating. Um, yeah. All in all, the sushi here actually wasn't that great. It was just above, uh, like, an, it was above an all-you-can-eat place back home, but below kind of the high-end sushi back home. Um... But despite that, it was just a really fun experience uh, just going through all of the things. Oh, and these are ours. It's also pretty affordable. I mean, we ate pretty good. Like, we ate quite a bit of food, and it was, again, better than all-you-can-eat places. And the whole thing came out to just about 30 bucks together for both of us uh, for some not terrible sushi. And when you're done, the plate goes down in this little slot, and it counts against your bill. Like I said, we had fun at Kura. I don't think we'll go back. Um, we also went to a, a more traditional conveyor belt sushi place, which I didn't film. It was fancier and like three times the price uh, and doesn't have as much bells and whistles. Basically less gimmicky, which is, you know, good for food and bad for TV. We've been to a number of parks and park light things throughout this trip so far, so I'm going to kind of summarize a bunch of them here. One of them is uh, Sensoji Temple, which is uh, kind of the big Buddhist temple, like physically large Buddhist temple in Tokyo. Honestly, this place was not great. We've been to other temples that were very serene and peaceful, and this place, as you can see, is more like a tourist zoo. There's like a market street out front, and there's tons of people everywhere. Even here, coming up to the actual temple part of the temple, it's just crawling with tourists. It's all in all not that cool. Off to the side, but within the same grounds, is a smaller Shinto shrine, which was uh, much more relaxing. We liked it better there. Speaking of Shinto shrines, the big Shinto shrine in Tokyo is the Meiji Shrine, which is in the middle of Yoyogi Park, which is this beautiful tropical looking park. This place also had a bunch of visitors, but maybe it was because we were in the middle of a park. It was just much more chill atmosphere. People were much more respectful here, we felt. And like, I'll take being surrounded by trees instead of being surrounded by trinkets any day. 
Ueno Park is one of Tokyo's major parks as well. This is more of like a city park rather than like a park park. As you can see, there's a lot of, uh, you know, paved ground and stuff. Um, but it was still really nice. As I've said before, we were not here in peak cherry blossom season, but this is where it happens. And because it's a park in Japan, there's also a little shrine here. The official Cherry Blossom Festival was still in swing when we were here, so we got to stop by these kind of like uh, fairground style foods and uh, check out what they had. I got a banana, it was dipped in chocolate and had sprinkles. We also got takoyaki, which are fried balls of octopus uh, topped with kind of like a sweet barbecue sauce and some salty fish flakes. One of the things the Japanese like to do during this season is have essentially huge picnics under the cherry blossom trees. This was honestly the loudest we heard them the whole time we've been here. We were also in Tokyo during a dog market. Dog market? Never have I seen so many small dogs in baby clothes and baby strollers in one place. Oh my god. I swear, three out of every five dogs was not allowed outside the house nude that morning. There was obviously some barking, but honestly, given how many dogs there were, we were actually pretty impressed at how well behaved everyone was. So many dogs. All right, almost done, almost done. Uh, one of the other cool things that we did is Team Lab's Planets. Team Lab is a kind of an art collective and Planets is an installation. This was one of the first tickets we booked when we knew when we were going to be in Tokyo. It's something of a multi-sensory experience, and so I'm not going to go through it beat by beat here. Uh, I'm just going to go through some of the highlights, and if you are worried about spoilers or anything like that, then, you know, don't watch this section. At some points there's water, so, you know, those shoes have gotta go. A lot of the footage is pretty dark because it's pretty dark in there and the camera's stabilization doesn't work as good in the dark so sorry if it's a bit shaky but uh, it's pretty cool uh, just walking around you can barely see. In this part you're walking up a hill towards a waterfall and the water's just running past your feet which is pretty sweet. This is that waterfall. This is a huge room, uh, which is, seems even bigger because of all the mirrors on the floor and the ceiling and the walls. And it's full, and I mean full, of these strings of LED lights. Uh, it's a super cool space, ripe for obviously uh, Instagram photos, but even just being in it is super cool. They go through, the lights go through all these uh, different patterns. Um, there are sections where you're falling, there are sections where it's dark, there are sections where it's colorful. It feels even cooler than it looks, probably, to uh, to be there. Uh, they did a really good job. It probably looks like I'm just standing in one spot and turning around, and it's just like, you know, the size of a room. But this place is actually really big. This place looks better in person and on camera. Uh, we are currently in knee-deep water that is milky and warm. And uh, they're projecting all of these uh, fish and... Um, and uh, cherry blossom leaves onto the surface of the water as we're kind of wading around in this big room. At some point we realized when we touch the fish they turn into the the petals that we've been seeing on the water and so there'd be these areas where no one was walking where there'd be whole schools of fish. Uh, so obviously we had to hunt and exterminate them. Let me tell you, this room here uh, was okay, but it had way too many selfies. Oh my god. There were big inflatable balls, it was cool, the floors mirrored and stuff, but like, guys. 
This is in the uh, garden section. They had all these cool looking eggs and when you touched them, they would do stuff. This was obviously Steph's favorite. Uh, this was a room full of hanging orchids that would all uh, raise and lower on strings. And then obviously the uh, required mirrors on all surfaces. This place must have cost like a half billion dollars. I mean, the mirrored floors and walls in some of these really large rooms, not to mention the large rooms themselves. And then there has to be like hundreds of orchids in here and they're not cheap. And I mean, we're allowed to walk through them. I assume some orchids don't make it and they have to replace them with new ones. Like this place is, and that's not even paying the artists. That's just the materials. Um, Really beautiful though, really cool. Uh, I was really glad that someone paid for it because uh, it was a really fun experience. And when no one was taking an Instagram photo and there were no kids stomping around, it was actually quite peaceful. All in all, I thought it was really cool and I kind of wish people did more big interactive art like that. Team Mob Planets is in a place called Odaiba, which is kind of a reclaimed fortress, like a, like a naval fortress. And there was one other thing in Odaiba that I wanted to see before we were done. Oh, hell yeah. Woo! Would you look at that? He's a real tall glass of water. What a real cool detail. It felt very cool and lifelike. That's a picture of a very happy boy. So anyway, that was a very quick rundown over weight. I'm sorry. I guess what I'm trying to say is that that was a very, very abridged version of our first week in Japan in Tokyo. So thanks for watching. Hey. I don't know if you know this, but there's a big Gundam over there. <laughs> he still looks pretty big to me. Yeah. I'd say he was dead wrong.